At the end of part 39, I was still undecided as to what to do about this gap between the big ends of the connecting rods and the coupling rods. I didn't call it out at the time, but I also wasn't happy about the mismatch between the oil pots on these parts. After thinking about it for far too long, I decided the right thing to do was to make new connecting rods. This time, however, I made the big ends asymmetric, with the inside surfaces protruding an extra millimetre in towards the coupling rods, which you should be able to see in this view here. I also adopted a bit of a cheat for the big end bushes. Rather than machining a rectangular bush, I turned one which has an outer face that is rectangular to make it look like the part that Don intended, but a lot easier to make, and more importantly, a lot easier to install into the connecting rod. I will of course lock tight the bush in place. This is only a test fit, but it already looks so much better. There is still a slight difference between the oil pots, but not as significant as it was. After loctiting the bushes in place and leaving them overnight for the compound to go off, I get on and drill the oil pots. As I did with the coupling rods, I drill part way through at 2.5mm diameter and then right through at 1mm. Fitting the con rods is no simple process and in fact had I have adopted Don's design of pressing the piston rods into the crossheads it would be even more complicated. First the small end needs to be fitted to the crosshead. As my crosshead is not secured to the piston rod with a press fit, I can remove it, which makes installing the rod a hell of a lot easier, as the crosshead pin cannot be fitted with the crosshead in situ unless the leading wheel set is removed. I've actually made this second set of rods slightly smaller by 2mm. The reason being that in Don's design, the piston rods are meant to be made to fit, whereas with my arrangement with the threaded piston rod, I'm able to adjust the length. And I did previously find that I was running out of thread. To fit the crosshead, I just screw the piston rod into it. I can do this now because there's no packing on the piston, and there's no packing on the gland. Once I've got packing in both of those places, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. So I'll need to fit the crossheads with the cylinders off the frames. Before clamping up the lock nut, I do a quick check to ensure the piston is not hitting either of the covers. To secure the connecting rod at the big end, I fit the return crank. It's worth noting here that it's the taper pin that holds the crank in the correct position. The clamping bolt is just there to stop it from falling off. There is still a tight spot in the rotation of the wheels and I'm thinking that's probably down to a slightly bowed coupling rod. So it was a bit of a pain to make two sets of connecting rods, but let's face it, they're not the only parts that I have or that I'm going to have to make twice. I do think it was well worth the effort and this collection of rods around the driving crank pins looks so much better. Thanks for watching.